Yeah, get it on, got to get it on. Oh, you know the rest. We're back at the <laughs> LA Auto Show. Too much to see in one day, so we broke it up into two episodes. I'm Adam Carolla. Matt's, say your name. Moderator Matt T. Andrea, that's my name. Yeah, and they uh, pop the hood for us on this uh, Audi TT, which is really cool. The new TTRS, this thing's sweet. Five cylinders, 2.5 turbocharged, <laughs> 41, zero to 60. Tons and tons to see, so uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy part two of uh, what the hell's the name of our show? <laughs> CarCast? CarCast, yeah. <laughs> At the LA Auto Show? I was about to call it Ace on the House, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, CarCast. Yeah, come on along. Standing here with Rich, or Richard Steinberg. Well, I'll just so call you Rich. Rich. We're close fun. enough. Yeah. Uh, in front of two really incredible, I don't even know, I don't want to call them cars. That doesn't even they're, feel they're right. They're the future. They're the future. How about that? Future. Future. Um, here at BMW, uh, later on, we'll get into some M5s and some uh, M3s for those who old school people. But first, the car that's behind me. What is it? This is called the i3 Concept. Mm -hmm. It's part of a new sub brand that BMW is bringing to market. This arrives in the year 2013. This car is very, very close to production version, even though it is a concept. It's very close. Really? Yeah, I know it seems the futuristic, but it's uh, coming in the two years time. I because we've all. We've all been burned before, where you went yeah. like, really, you're going to make yeah. this car? Well, where's and then you, the bumpers then and the mirrors? Then you come back and, the, and it's like, and you think it's completely it different. Right. It's completely different, yeah. and sometimes that's uh, cafe's fault, and sometimes that's uh, Cal, uh, you know, yeah. um, crash testing. That's a uh, EPA. Yeah, one, yeah. That, yeah, right. DOT's yeah. fault or whatever. But the car that you're going to bring to the highway is going to be very close to what's behind. Yeah, exactly. Us. This is a battery electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a new uh, architecture in terms of production, manufacturing mm -hmm. process. It has, uh, in some ways, it's sort of an old school body on frame concept mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it has an aluminum chassis where the batteries are mounted down low and the mm -hmm. electric motors are mounted in the rear of the car for rear wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And mounted to that is what we call the uh, life module, which is mm -hmm. carbon fiber. So we're mm -hmm. using carbon fiber reinforced plastic to protect the, the passengers. Right. A weight is the enemy of range when sure, it comes to sure, electric car. Sure. So we're using carbon fiber Formula One technology. You can actually see here that this doesn't even have a B pillar because you can protect the occupants, maximize interior space yes. without uh, uh, just, actually just, compromising the space. Just pass my hand through where the B, where the B pillar, pillar used to be. would normally be. Right. So it, it's a it's a dedicated plug-in electric. Roughly 100 miles in real-world conditions. It has, has active thermal management, so in colder or warmer climates, you can always circulate the fluid through the battery pack, keep the battery at optimal temperature, so as well as the cabin. So it's battery pack? Yes, it and, is. And there is there, there is no uh, internal combustion motor? Yes right? and no. This uh -huh. car will be available in two combinations. Uh -huh. You can buy it as a pure battery electric, as I mm -hmm. mentioned, 80 to 100 miles. Uh -huh. But those people that may have what's called range anxiety, I'm sure you've heard the phrase. Sure. If you're afraid to, to d jump in the pool with a pure electric, we'll also offer this car as an option with an internal combustion engine, which is called a Rex. Why do you say jump in the pool? <laughs> 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 that would freak certain people out. Yeah. So, yeah. so, it's, it's a, so that, that'll have a, a small three-cylinder with a very small gas tank, which mm -hmm. basically allow you to double the range. This goes 80 to 100, right. real-world conditions. And if you, if you order the optional range extender, it'll go an additional 80 to 100 uh, using yeah. gasoline. The gasoline motor does not drive the wheels, right. it simply acts as a generator right. to charge the battery. And plug-in, household current, you, you, full uh, charge It takes an about... awful long time with the standard 110 outlet, but if you put the dedicated charger, the ones that everybody's using, all the mm -hmm. electric cars use the same style now. It's four hours, this has a seven kilowatt mm -hmm. onboard charger. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the competition only has a 3.3, so if any pulled up to a, uh, a, a random public charging station, mm -hmm. when in a BMW versus one of the competitors, we would charge twice as fast. So four hours for us from completely empty to completely full, some of the competition takes overnight. And what uh, do you think this will start at price-wise? Uh, it's an EV, so we're competing in the EV space, and you know we can obviously command the premium for the BMW brand, but sure. we want to be competitive with other EVs. So, 45, I'm not going to give you a number. <laughs> to 50, not going to give you a number. 50, 50. You know what I think is kind of interesting is, um, so BMW owns motorcycles as well, so yes. the uh, the gas generator that's going to be in this, is that coming from the motorcycle side it or from the other side? It hasn't been communicated at this point, uh, but you can use your imagination. It's a flat, <laughs> so, I'm going to say the motorcycle side. Opposed, air you know, cooled. Why put in like a two liter you know, yeah. giant engine off of, you know, when yeah, just I mean, three cars that, when you can put yeah, in one I mean, of those. This, this, the concept like car at least has a three-cylinder motor. This thing is now, This is an incredible sleek. supercar. And you look at this thing, and it's very sexy, very hot looking. I said and, and it reminds me sort of when the M1 first came out in terms of uh, the rims are 
remind me a little bit. They're not shaped like it, but they just make me feel that way. And the car does too. Like it was when the M1 came out. I don't know, '79. It was wildly futuristic. Yeah, absolutely. Like everyone was like, "Wow, what the cool hell is car. this?" And now this feels like 30 yeah. years later we're the, doing it over This car again. was uh, on display at the Frankfurt Show about two years ago, the Vision Efficient Dynamics, and mm -hmm. everybody looked at it and said, hey, it's just a concept, it's never going to reach reality. This car, very similar to this vehicle, limited changes, 2014. Really? Really? So you're not talking very far away. This car, 2014. What does this car claim to do? This is a PHEV. So this is a plug-in hybrid electric. Mm -hmm. It has two motors. The same motor that's in this i3 will be uh, uh, driving the front wheels, mm -hmm. and then has a small three-cylinder gas motor driving the rear wheels. Oh, really? So you have all-wheel drive. Wow. Uh, the two motors operating together, if yeah. you want to accelerate quickly or travel at high speeds, have roughly a little short of 400 horses, zero to 60 well under five seconds. Wow. Uh, you have pure battery electric drive of the front wheels, mm -hmm. 20 or so miles. Mm -hmm. So in city driving, you're not accelerating aggressively. Right, right. You can always just use a, a plug power mm -hmm. the whole time. But if you want to accelerate aggressively or travel at higher speeds, both motors will operate together. And wow. it has an equivalent of 78 miles per gallon, which for a car like this is pretty hard to imagine. Wow. And the car behind me will have about what miles it's per gallon? It's pure electric, so it's hard and sort of hard to. It's the, got a hundred mile range on charge. Yeah, some, hundred mile range on charge. Exactly. Some chart that will tell you how many yeah. kilowatts yeah. versus EPA is the gallon still, or still whatever. talking about how to, the, the to best way to out, measure that and communicate that and, yeah. and yeah. commonize the way to communicate that. Wow! And where will these cars be built? In Plant Leipzig. Yeah, it's in Germany in somewhere. Germany. Okay, exactly. good. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure because I know you know BMW does some stuff in Nashville. Oh, we have know. a Spartanburg facility, which is the X models, the X3, right. and the X5. Yeah. Right, right. But these all be built in Germany. Right. And do you have any kind of numbers in terms of how many units they're thinking about it, putting it, out? It's too soon to, to communicate that, but it, it's a global car. It's a dedicated platform. It's not shared with anything else within the BMW family. No, it is not. So uh, obviously, we have to make the, the volumes work for that. Right. Well, uh, Rich. You've outdone yourself, and and again, just the no B pillar, and yeah. yet side impact and airbags yeah. and all the meeting all the standards of uh, today's and tomorrow's safety. Yeah, and um, look unbelievable! Good. It's all the premium features you'd expect from BMW. Well, um, we have a a few years away for these cars, but there is a car. The that is, uh, Yes, and, oh, you want to talk and about the M5. M5. I'll I talk, about, want the to talk about, about the M5. About that, but you were allowed to talk about the M5. If you like. <laughs> Can we go? Uh, Let's go talk about the M5. See the M5, and uh, we'll look at the M3 while we're there. Can we do that, Rich? That's not my area. Oh, not your area. Well, you can talk right. to Matt about that. All right, Rich, you stay here. <laughs> Guard these cars. <laughs> and do not touch this door. You'll get yelled <laughs> no, at. Right, you can't do that. I'm standing here with Matt Russell from BMW. Matt is going to tell us about, well, we'll start with the uh, M5, and then we'll work our way down to the M3. Nice to meet you, Matt. Thanks, you too. Big um, fan. I'm a big fan of your product, not so much you, but, but, but the day is young, man. Yeah, I know. This could go the wrong way. I, I've, I've heard the, the car cast. <laughs> <laughs> i always, uh, always been a BMW guy. We, we uh, speak highly about BMWs. Mm, thank I you. Think. There was thank a time you. in my career when uh, Drew, Dr. Drew, as yeah. you know him, uh, drove the M5 and I drove the M3 and yep. we showed up the Love Line every day together. Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys got me through cars. puberty. I appreciate that. <laughs> so what do we got? Uh, to get us through our midlife crisis uh, behind us. Yeah, well, we have the fifth generation M5, and it is more of an M5, I would say, than any of its predecessors, which is really saying something. Yeah, well, when the I remember when the first one hit, and it was like, holy crap. Yeah. This thing's got yeah. 400 horsepower, and it's, uh, you know, five speed, and it's like it's four doors, and it's yeah. zero to yeah. 60, and I don't know, five, six, or whatever yeah. it was, and it was like, that was yeah, I really like groundbreaking. The, I still, like, that, that I still like it, too. Like, it just, it holds up. 12 years later, whatever whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. But this looks more muscular, if that's possible, than the bar soap. And it generation. really is. This one just clocked a 3.7 for car and driver, zero to 60, and a 12 wow. flat quarter mile. And it did it on greasy Spanish roads where the press launch was held. And that's really mind blowing, even for us. It's two wheel drive car. Greasy Spanish roads was my dusty, Cape Horn dusty. name. Oh, dusty, <laughs> dusty Spanish dusty. roads was my. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You know, we did what we had to do in yeah. the 80s to get by. It's a different time, man. <laughs> different judge. Um, so this thing, I went snuck a peek, uh, has a V8. It's 560 horsepower? It is 560 horse rated. So. It's twin turbo, yeah. right? Twin, twin turbo. turbo. Yeah. Is it a 4.4? Four yeah. four it is a 4.4, four, yeah. All aluminum. Nice. 500 pound-feet of torque from 1,500 RPM to over 5,700 RPM. Wow. All the time. Yeah. And what kind of transmission are we going to... 
it's, it's got, got the, the, back of that the standard transmission is the MDCT, so seven speed dual clutch transmission with launch control. Mm -hmm. And we put one of our magic diffs in it as well. It's got a magic rear end, uh, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so and it's that got diff, a, do we know what the number on that diff is? I can't remember the ratio. I can tell you it can. It can Just uh, say 444. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you know it's 331. Get down there yeah. Nice and short. Here. Nice and short. It gets yeah. it done. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And um, I'm glad that it's, it's a magic diff as opposed to giving us some long acronym of all of the things that nobody. Yeah. Well, it's it just has magic, a long man. It does it what it does. Name, but I, I call magic. it magic, yeah, because it, it has electrically controlled lockup. And so variable oh, and really? electrically controlled, yeah. It's not torque vectoring, but it's about as close as you can get. Wow. And you know, I'll tell you one thing I do appreciate, appreciate about BMW is I love the brakes because I, I know some guys go with the slotted discs, I, they don't look good. And then some guys have the cross drill disc, but the hole's too small. Yeah. I think uh, I think Porsche does that a little bit. You guys go with the big bore holes in the side of your disc, and you can see them yeah. from 100 feet away. And they, they can just jam a pinky look in there. Good. Yeah, we either yeah. don't do them at all, or we really do it right. Or you go berserk. And as a matter of fact, I'm such a weirdo that when I got my was it E39 yeah. M3? E36. Oh, wait a minute. I got the E36, yeah. I got the E36 yeah. M3. I got the E30. I got the E. Actually, you have. No, a, I have the E39. You had yeah. an E30, and then you have an E46 in the. In the oh, E46. Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. an E46. I had an E36. When well. I got my E46, it did not have these big cross drilled brakes on it. And right. I said, give me the ones from Germany. And I just pulled the whole hat off and everything yeah. and yeah. slammed it on. And uh, oh, two pieces, aluminum hat. Now we're really showing them off on the new M5. We've got the rotor, uh, the calipers painted blue now on all the yeah. M5s. And, yes. uh, and this one has the optional 20 inch forged wheels. Nice. And so you really get a good look at them. Are you going to be able to get it with a manual transmission or is, or is the paddle shifter basically the only option now? All the previous M5s were available with a manual transmission. Yeah. So I can tell you that we're, uh, we're looking at it very closely, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so that means yes, and it's going to be new. It's going to have 18 gears. It's going to, you're just going to be, it's like Mack truck. You're yeah. doing it all day. We have a subset of our M5 customers who have always had their M5s with manuals, yeah. of course, and they feel very strongly that that's part of the driving experience, and we respect that. We pay close attention to that. Well, and it's always something, even from back in the day, that's just fun about a large car with four doors and a stick shift. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it just felt fun. It's almost naughty. It's just something wrong. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. feel like you're getting away with so, something. Tell me about the color that's on this one now. You've done a few of the M3 versions in a, in a frost exactly. color, which is basically like a satin clear coat. Yeah, we call it frozen, and it's uh, this is frozen silver. This is the first time the M5 has ever been seen in frozen silver. Um, and it's, yeah, we're doing it because we're trying to make the announcement that the M5 will launch with our BMW individual program available on the car from the start of production. So this is one of the individual colors. Well, call me old fashioned, but the, fashioned. the uh, Emola red, if you still call it that, <laughs> is yeah. always one. I, it's funny because I'm not even a red car guy, yeah. but the Emola red on the BMWs, especially the M5. Know, I never liked it on the M5. No, I loved I do. it That's on the M5. Really? Yeah. With the, with, yeah. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> no, I like the blue one, though. It's with, polarizing. Uh, with the yeah. inserts, the red inserts. Yes, yeah, the two tone seats. seats. Come on. No, you can still get it. just seems like too much red to me. I'm the guy who likes the groovy gooly, you know, high top tennis shoe mobile too that uh, Ferrari ripped off from you guys. Oh, <laughs> the the, oh the, yeah, the bread seater. wagon. Yeah. yeah, I'm the, the only guy. I don't fit wagon. in the car, but I'm still the only guy who likes that. I love that car too, so it makes two of us. Yeah, the the, you the M5 like you can still thing. get with Emola Red if you want it under our special order program. BMWs feel different. They drive different. Some guy gave me an explanation once about the engine being pushed back or something, right. but it was just like, I'm not buying all that. It just felt different. Cars, other cars, with comparable horsepower and comparable weight to horsepower ratios still don't handle and feel like the BMW feels. Especially the BMW M, I think. And, and even on the M5, that's true. We got the, the engine in the new M5 is 20 millimeters lower than it would be in a regular 550i. I so we it. still do that magic. Do you yeah. move that engine yeah. somehow. <laughs> We're always moving the engine, wheels, tires. So, so this uh, M3 is not new for 2012? No, it's it's continued. We've had the M3 on sale now as a uh, coupe and convertible and, and a sedan since 2008. Mm -hmm. The sedan has gone out of production in preparation for the new 3 Series sedan launch, which is about to take place. This um, is a 4 liter? The, the, four, this engine is a 4 liter V8. 4 liter V8, yeah, 32 right. valve V8, all aluminum, right. 8 individual throttle bodies, Sure. 414 horsepower in the US, Yeah. 295 pound feet. Yeah. What do you mean they, in the US? What do you mean in the US? 420 in Europe. Uh, it's, a, oh, it's a rating geez. thing. Let's just screw with us. Yeah, um, and so all the talk about downsizing, going with the turbocharged V6, 
Uh, you were saying off camera that this thing's going to have a V8 in it for a few more seasons. He didn't right? officially say anything. <laughs> well, what I said was that the current M3 is still mid cycle. It's not an old car yet. It's still winning competitions. It's still right. on magazine covers. It's still a success. It's still very much in demand and its sales are flat or increasing from mm -hmm. for the last two years. So the car is still very much sought after by consumers and we're not putting this car out to pasture. I did mention that the four door's gone out of production as of October to make room for the new three series sedan, mm -hmm. but the M3 coupe and convertible will still be with us for at least another one or two model years. Uh, it used to be back in the day BMW would take a couple of years off, sometimes more, in between their M3s. Well, I, all the M cars. The last M5 the M5 was cars. a 2010 and this one will be a 2013 for us. Yes, yeah, yeah. so you guys are still doing that but I mean in the past it felt like there was a big gap there like like they just stopped. Well, like mine was a 99. I think there was no 2000. It was 2001. Yeah, That's right. The first uh, and you go back to the E30 body style M3 from 80, 88 70, to 91. 80, yeah. yeah, and then another uh, 95 model year. Yeah, so yeah. I mean it was a yeah. long, it was a long wait for the enthusiasts, and uh, I had no money back then, so it was like, <laughs> yeah, still Make driving a Zuzu Trooper, the four <laughs> banger. And, by the way, no bigger yeah. vehicle with a smaller engine than that uh, 80 whatever Zuzu Trooper I'm those. driving around. I don't know. You could get a Mustang with over 400 horsepower, but it would not feel quite like this. Although, I, I got to tell you, I, I got to be honest with you, I got one of these a little off the track over at uh, Willow Springs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I probably shouldn't be saying this on camera, but what happened was is moments earlier, I got a Mustang off yeah, the, yeah. you know, I'm fair and balanced. I got the Mustang off the track, and, and they didn't catch it on camera. So somebody said, like one of the producers said, go over there and just throw up a bunch of dirt and, yeah. and well it wasn't really cheating because i did throw up a bunch of dirt it's just the camera was facing the other direction so yeah. we went over there and just threw up a bunch of some, yeah. someone just peeled out in their car and threw up a bunch of dirt and then they filmed it yeah. and so then five minutes later i'm coming around in the m3 and there's a bunch of dirt out on the track where we just cheated our last shot and uh, next thing you know how fast were you going well the first time I, I, it was going quick the second time bunch of production assistants through dirt on the track, so yeah. it doesn't matter how fast you're going. I was, uh, I say in the 90s. If you're probably. at Willow Springs, you were fast everywhere. That's a fast track. I, yeah, that track bothers me. I, I don't know why. It's one of the last old school terrifying tracks I in America. Know, I love that, it. Yeah. That big sweeping turn where it's like you don't know when yeah. it's going to end, and it's, it is. It's terrifying. Yeah. Earlier yes. this year, we had the One Series M Coupe there, this M3 competition package, and the X5M there all at once. Terrifying. And we put an instructor in there to do timed laps, and each, and they were only about a second apart. The M3 really? was the fastest, then the One Series M Coupe, and then the X5M. Yeah. Oh, the M yeah, Coupe. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Love that bad boy. Oh, yeah. uh, Matt, is there anything we're missing here from your uh, beautiful collection? We've just got these two M cars. Uh, wow. Our pride and joy for now. And uh, yeah, the new M5 goes on sale next summer. I'll tell you, I I, I got to say about M and, and our BMW and their styling, They've had some stuff that I've liked and then some stuff where I thought was like a step, maybe we'll call it a lateral move because because uh, I'm here in BMW land. But uh, home run on this M5. Thank like, you. You Thank guys you are much. back with that bad boy. It looks tough. Yeah. It looks mean, but it looks refined and it doesn't look like it's got a bunch of crap on it that says, hey, look at me, but it does just look just looks like a guy with a great build who's not his shirt's not off but you can see stuff <laughs> poking through his sweater that says i don't want you i'm not going to mess with this guy well since we're in hollywood the car ought to fit right in there since yes, we're in la a lot, a lot of tomorrow guys that, we'll roll the alpina b7 back out on the floor as well and you, you damn know, another one in our 500 horsepower club yeah it's another big sedan oh um, miss really dance. love me some alpina yeah. thanks matt all right another year and back with jag and back with ian callum ian uh, good to see you again and you and you yeah Drop the fake accent. Let's just move on with the interview. <laughs> this is the LA Auto Show. All right. Okay. All right, guys. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, what is behind us, Ian? Well, behind us is a CX16 concept car. Mm -hmm. We call it a concept production car because there's a lot of it is very feasible. And uh, if we decide to build it, it's actually we could do this. Uh, it looks great. I hope you do. I mean, it, it has, I mean, Matt and I were just speaking before. We're suckers for the long front end. Mm -hmm. Sort of long hood, just front engine GT design. It's such or, a gorgeous car. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just, I, you know, I mean, the XKs of yore, the, uh, especially the old Aston Martins, and even the new Aston Martins, just that long 
front hood. I mean, I appreciate the mid-engine stuff, but I don't like the stubby front end. Well, it's just all about extreme proportions. I think proportions of a car, visual aspects of a car, are exciting when you exaggerate some aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And you look at Jangis of old, like the SS1, it had a huge long bonnet. We call them bonnets, but they're... Oh, right. sorry, yeah. Uh, in our, our hoods. You know, they had huge long hoods relative to the size of the cabin. And it's that excitement of excessive proportion one way or another. I mean, the engine's still exciting. It's opposite way around. It's got a little short, stubby front and a long back. And, right. and I actually quite like mid-engine cars, but but I understand what you mean about the, the exaggerated. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I you know, it's fun. It's we fun. were at uh, Laguna Seca uh, for the Rolex race a couple months back, and yeah. Jag was yeah. running their own thing. Yeah, out there. I remember that I was there. It was just exciting, and and. Not only that, but I went and looked at the display of the funky 70s V12 race cars, and mm -hmm. even that was cool. Like, I, I Oh, that was the uh, the XJ13, the Jaguar XJ13 with the mid-engine yes. car in it. That yeah, was a pretty was, cool car. That was a beautiful car. That was. That was a beautiful car. Um, so, what are we talking about as far as power plant if this thing actually Well, this made? car actually has a, a V6 in it. It's about 380 horsepower, which in itself is pretty substantial. Sure. Given the car, is quite a lightweight car. and But it also has about uh, 95 horsepower of um, hybrid drive, an electric motor oh. as well. So it's got a built-in hybrid, uh, off regenerative braking, of course. So when you've just had about enough of 380, you want a little bit more, you've got a little button on the steering wheel, and it'll kick in the hybrid power. So we're using hybrid. Hybrid on demand. Hybrid on demand, yeah. Right. So it'll give you a good few seconds, quite a, quite a substantial amount of time of, of full power, about 400 horse, 500 horsepower. And so That's quick. I feel yeah. like, in, 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 stop me if I'm wrong, Sir Ian, but in years past, <laughs> a lot of people bring concept cars out that they had no intention of ever building. That's true. And they just go, here's what we could do if we had unlimited funds, yeah. but we're not going to do it. And 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 you just kind of get you excited for yeah. nothing. Yeah. And now it feels like... That's design like, is showing off. That's yeah, right. Somebody realized that's expensive. Some, and yeah, and, and also, expensive. It, 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 it tended to piss people off because they're like, ah, this is never going to happen. And, and so we've done it. dangling? Everyone yeah, has we've done, done it. it. We've done it. Don't dangle that poor As a designer, it seems like it'd be like fun to do. Well, that's half the reason why it happens because designers just indulge and say, right, we're going to do the show car. They get a budget. And I think by the time the car is finished, sometimes the bosses turn around and think, well, why are you doing this? Well, because we want to. But we don't do that anymore. Right. You know, if we, if we put a car forward, it is really for genuine reasons, either to assess opinion. Um, I might put a show car forward, actually, that really has a very good chance of, of, of existing, but I'll do it to try and impress upon uh, the outside world that we could move forward and we'll take it to the next step. But we won't do it just indulgently and leave it where it is. This car, as I say, is almost production ready. And we're just looking for reassurance that uh, that the public will like it, in this country especially. You know, this is the home of such vehicles. It always has been for Jaguar. And uh, we want to make sure people in LA would want to buy this in sufficient numbers. I like the idea of, of, a, of a high performance hybrid. Oh, that's you know? cool. Yeah. You know, but the hybrids don't have to be kind of like, you know, soggy, boring cars. Yeah. It's a cool thing. It's a great technology. It's about efficiency. To use all your braking power to power the car, to pick it up yeah. and, and then let it out again. You know, you just, you think hybrid, you think, oh, well, it's slow. It's, oh, you know, it's just, you know, this thing seems like it's... <laughs> well, hybrid can be sexy. Yeah. Well, it the can. thing yeah. is, is, I mean, obviously the instant torque with electric yeah. motors is great. But the other thing I'm noticing with the whole hybrid thing, movement, is somebody said we really got to focus on weight mm -hmm. because weight is the enemy. That's the enemy. It's always the enemy, the but, it's the a, enemy. But, it, but when you have a huge V8 in front, I know. it's not as big a deal. Uh, now it is. And so I see everything, the seats, panels, Smaller. everything just becoming more refined, more yeah. fit. It's like everything was put on some kind of, you know, master cleanse diet and it got a personal trainer. So everything is just sleeker, where it used to be sort of billowy and puffy yeah. and thick and laden. Now everything just looks so sleek. It's haunt, and it's haunt to minimum, and we have to do that, and not just from a, a design style point of view, but we have to do it to get the mass out, especially seats. Seats are very heavy things. Yes. Some of them have got four, five, six electric motors in them. So we right. have to really hone these things down, get the mass out. Mass is the enemy. You're absolutely right. Sure. We've got aluminum bodies in these cars, of course, which helps us yeah. tremendously. It's about half the weight of a normal body. And so all that stuff added on time and time again will get the weight right down. There's a terrible irony with modern cars. One of the reasons they're heavy is because they've got so many airbags in them. Right. You know, and, and you've got crash zones, you've got all this good stuff, which, you know, you need to have. You know, the safety factors now are much, much more impressive than they used to be. 
But all that stuff puts weight onto the car and puts mass yeah. onto the car. So you almost, first of all, have to compensate for that and take it back out again. But I think within 10 years, we'll be getting down to, you know, cars of this type down to 1,200, 1,300 kilos, which is going to be really? pretty lightweight cars. Which would be about under 3,000 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, in, in real money, I can't remember. Well, I only but, know it yeah. from cocaine. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. Okay, <laughs> not that yeah. I did any, but I've watched <laughs> enough documentaries <laughs> yeah, to yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, 3,000 like pounds of coke three, seems like a lot. Uh, yeah. per pound <laughs> it's 2.2 or something, two or something like that. Yeah, I see. I don't know. But it's a lightweight car. It's a lightweight car. So, you know, our race cars are maybe really ultimate race cars about a thousand kilos so we're not much much bigger what than that. will you be racing do you think in the future I what mean, will we be jag, racing i mean is jag i'd like to think there's no plans for us to go racing at the moment i'd like to think we could go back racing again i mean i'm a great racing fan we all are at jaguar um but that's a wait and see you know and it's you know if you're going to go racing there's one thing you need to do to go racing and win it's a lot of money yeah that's a fact you can't yeah. get over that no yeah. amount of ingenuity will actually get over the fact you need a lot of money and uh, you know we will do it when we're when, when the time is ready well so. I, I, I've said it once but I'll, I, it bears repeating which is I just grew up here in in LA and I grew up in the 80s 70s and 80s and I just thought Jag back then was just a brand for old divorcees you know who had a <laughs> lot of money and wanted a lot of luxury and then I went to the Goodwood Historic Races about six years ago and saw those Jags on the, the track. Ones. Yeah, from they were the raw 60s. Cars. And they just were kicking ass yeah, on everybody. Yeah. And it was weird for me because it was like, that's a Jag? Yeah, yeah, I know. And they're just whooping ass on everybody. And I realized why they did so much winning yeah. back in the day. Well, a very innovative car company in the 50s, 60s. And it would, uh, would be cool to see Jag back at Le Mans. As you well, you know, I, I, I'd like to think that too. I think it's a rightful place of sports cars on the track. And uh, you never know. But, but it's interesting what you say, because I grew up in the 50s and 60s, and I remember these times when Jags were cool, and that's what helps me to create cars like this. Well. So uh, I'd like to think that could have some stripes and roundels on it one day yeah, but yeah. we'll keep our fingers crossed <laughs> the roundels are where you put the number yeah that's yeah, the roundel they yeah, them yeah. Uh, <laughs> well sir Ian uh, you've outdone yourself once again and uh, I oh, guess we'll see, a you, we'll see you next year you huh? will indeed. thank you always a pleasure yeah thank you so much thank you thank you standing here with uh, John Edwards I almost screwed that up from uh, Land Rover uh, got a concept is this a concept behind us it is a concept and is it going to come to fruition, or what do you what do you think the chances are? Is there going to be a version of this? And I, boy, barely even looked at it. This is well, crazy. Well, I've got to say, based on the reaction we've had the last couple of days, I think um, I think it's look, looking pretty hot, pretty uh, pretty likely. But there's a long way to go, so who knows? Do you yeah. like it? I like it, and uh, I like it because it's nuts. It's a two seater. It's a two-seater Land Rover that looks like. Some tells me production version will have a top on it, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of, it really looks... Hopefully we'll be able to take the top off. Yeah. Looks like something G.I. Joe might drive in a, in a cartoon, and uh, that's a compliment. Yeah. Um, nice. Land Rover has some of the coolest, to me, interiors of... I mean, all British, British cars seem to... They nail the interiors, but Land Rover, I think, is the nicest SUV interior that I'm aware of. Am I making that I up? I agree with I, that. It's I, nice I think they're gorgeous it, inside. Yeah, they're I gorgeous. have got to agree with that as well. I'm afraid. <laughs> well, you kind of have to. I mean, you can't stand here and say I really love the Beamer. But no, you're right. I mean, particularly the Range Rover is probably the iconic interior, and it's everywhere you go. People talk about the interior of that car. That's I, that's, I, a, that's something we're very proud I of. See, I always think it's genius because I know a lot of Hollywood types, and they drive the Range Rover. And it's not based on weight to horsepower ratio or any of that. They just poke their head in and they see the stitching and they go, this is where I want to yeah. sit. I know there's some statistic, some crazy st statistic about how many miles they've traveled and how many people they've saved and like how much stuff they've done. I mean, off road, back when off road wasn't speed yeah. bumps at a Whole Foods in Santa Monica, but you were actually out in the desert. You're you're somewhere in Africa having to go through, you know, four foot deep yeah. of uh, stream to get to the other side. What d does does Land Rover and Range Rover make anything for those, you know, the crazy guys who want to shoot rhinos from the side of a truck anymore? Yeah, we do. We still make the Defender. We don't sell it in uh, in the U.S., but the original Defender. That's the original Fender still in production in still in production. Parts of the world. Yeah, we sell about twenty thousand a year. 
We sell it just about everywhere other than the US. We don't sell it in the US because it doesn't pass the safety yeah. legislation. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And um, yeah. and yeah, that's, that's so that is the, the vehicle that yeah. the guys that are running the tours through the Serengeti are Correct. Are, yeah. are driving. Yeah. And I was curious about that because I was thinking, what the heck would you put out there now? But no, no, that's that, that, as per usual. There's a cool vehicle that isn't yeah. brought here because of our stupid regulations. Well, here now <laughs> we, have, uh, come in. <laughs> we have the new one, uh, the Evoke, Evoke yeah. which is in a two-door and a four-door. Yeah. And I understand it's SUV of the year, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations. But, I mean, it's Did they it's, send you a fancy trophy? It's fantastic, we have a trophy. One, one, of the tr one of the trophies is over there, maybe both over there. Oh, one there it is, Motor Trend, SUV we, um, Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant. for us, it's brilliant, because this is the home of the SUV. For a compact SUV, um, Four-cylinder engine, by the way, to win SUV of the year. Charged, right? It's turbocharged. I, I, it's just amazing, and we're everybody really, got turbos now. I've got to really say, I'm a, I'll pay it a good compliment, which is it looks like a concept car. I mean, it is yeah. aggressive looking. It looks like the kind actually, of thing, it looks a lot like the concept that you guys had it here. Looks it's right. almost, almost identical. Almost to, yeah, like I, that that roof line is dramatic, and I would have thought. When I saw it in the concept form, I'd say, "All right, well, they're not going to do this when they." But you guys had the balls to do it, and uh... well, you know, we our, our chief designer Jerry McGovern, he has a uh, no compromise attitude, and which is brilliant. So he says, "No, this is the design. This is what it's got to stay at." And our our um, engineers have a kind of can-do attitude. Yeah. Put them together, and they've done a great job in delivering that car. And right now, that car is hot. I tell you, it's hot everywhere in the world. The worst thing about that car is we can't make enough, and um, well, how it's many a nice units position. Do you think? Yeah. Do you know what? We never talk about how many cars we're going to sell. It always comes back and bites us. Uh, yeah, they're going to keep selling gonna, until they don't want. It's going to be our best-selling car. That's that's for sure. Well, thanks, Chad. Yeah. It's been a little Great. A little slice of heaven. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Well, here we are with Mark Danke and Audi, one of my favorite brands, and uh, I, I had the S4 until this guy got me a free car. And then I said, well, sorry, dude, it. we called. Nobody <laughs> what are you answered. Doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Nobody answered. Uh, we're, we're in front of my favorite sort of flagship cruiser, which yeah. is that S8. I love these cars and I love the interior of these cars. Nicer than, uh, and I know, I, all right, I do a lot of interior talking, I, and, I, and, and it's true. But uh, German interiors are sort of, uh, you know, functional. And this, is hey look at me and it's an audi always seemed to be that way at least with this s8 yes yeah i mean uh, the s8 is definitely our flagship with a performance uh, angle to it uh, the interior has certainly always been recognized as being a really good fit and finish uh, and this one with cross stitch leather uh, sport seats yeah carbon fiber standard it Vintage. definitely uh, adds a little bit of a nice touch to it it's beautiful and um i, I always say this about Audi and and I say when people talk about like any company I go look I remember when I would have strangled someone if they bought an Audi like back in you know 89 or whenever I don't even know if Audi putting out cars in 89 but there was <laughs> a did. time there was a time when Audi was a bit of a joke and Audi said you know what let's turn it around and they turned it around in the early mid 90s and then they not only turned it around, they turned on the afterburners, and now they're Audi and everyone's forgotten. Like, everyone is just a short memory. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Audi is synonymous with quality and performance and luxury and everything, and everyone forgot. And I always just tell people, like, what is so-and-so gonna do? I'm like, what did Audi do? Start doing, make a better product. <laughs> I'd like to think it's short... one guy. There was one guy that got fired or died or something and <laughs> is there changed one everything. Guy? <laughs> and let's hope he was a janitor, yeah. like low level dude. Yeah, That's just... what it was, it was the janitor. But Audi office, completely yeah. turned it around. I mean, just completely. Yeah, no, we we have uh, feel really fortunate. I mean, the entire product line now has been revamped. We started with the R8, which certainly kicked it off as a halo vehicle. We have the A4 that came next, the A5, and now we've gone through the A6, 7, and the A8. And now we have the performance models, the S6, S7, yeah, A8 yeah. here today. See, I like the S cars. And even uh, the, the S8 that you have, I, I kind of like the 10 cylinder, the kind of the big throaty, high RPM 10, but this is a completely different engine now. Yeah, the, the 4.0T is a twin turbo V8. It gets 520 horsepower uh, and certainly moves it quickly from zero to 60 in four seconds flat. Wow. Uh, the, so the car behind me 
Yes. Four seconds Four flat. Four seconds flat. That is and really the, of hot rod. The part that, that we like about it is that it's sort of a new, what we've been doing on all of our product lines. So we go with a smaller displacement, higher output, high torque, and it's a, it's a flat torque curve such that the car uh, gets 10% better fuel economy, not only because of that, but also because it has cylinder on demand, so it switches off from eight to four cylinders. With the added, of course, the engineers couldn't stop there, to your yeah. point, who's responsible for this stuff. <laughs> the engineers, uh, they said it's not good enough to just shut off down to four cylinders because then it'll be too noisy, it won't sound right, or it doesn't run as smooth. So they put active engine mounts in place. You don't notice any vibration difference in the vent engine when it goes from eight to four. And they also put uh, four microphones in the headliner and they use, that measures the sound, which takes out any negative noise that you might hear. So that you basically, you not basically, you feel no difference between a four hit. cylinder yeah. and eight cylinder mode. The only way you can tell is if you look at the digital readout in the, in yeah. the middle console. Not like the it has active Cadillac. motor mounts. That's not yeah. like any car you've built in, in, in previously, in any race car we've ever had, be like active motor mounts. I mean, you never even think of that. I think yeah. my motor mounts are passive aggressive now <laughs> that I think about it. I don't even know if they're active. But, and thank you for pumping some horsepower into the TT. Yeah. Because I always dug the TT, and I was saying to Matt when we were walking in here, because he digs the TT too, and yeah. I said, it's sort of like the NSX was a few years ago, way back when. But I was like, everyone dug it, but wanted a little more punch in the horsepower department, and now you're up to three what? 360 that? horsepower, uh, and it's we we're selling, basically we've, we're bringing the RS back, the RS brand, back to the US, mm -hmm. 360 horsepower, manual only. So uh, for any manual geeks out yeah. there and enthusiasts, nice. the car is, is an amazing car. Does it have a launch control? It has launch control on it. It also has a two-stage ESP setting, so you can go, that well, raises that, the threshold of it engaging, and you can also shut it off with yeah. a second press. I, hold on, uh, I didn't even know you could have launch control in a manual only. Yeah. You, yeah. Can get, you can get launch control on that one. What the hell? I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't know how it works either. But you know what? If you're if you're hardcore enough to go manual, I think yeah. you probably just delete the launch control because you're one of those. But you're, and you're care. saying earlier you were saying it's like zero to sixty in four point one seconds. Four point one seconds. See, that's that's what the TT needed. Like I drove several of the TTs, and once it's you know zero to sixty in four point one seconds sounds like that's a ball's yeah. a little car. Yeah, that is fun. It it definitely uh, the combination of an aluminum hybrid space frame, so it's light the actual construction of the vehicle with a manual, which is just fun. And then yeah. of course, 360 horses in a car that, that that's that size for $57,000 is pretty much unbeatable in but its segment. Plus it gets better fuel efficiency than anything else that's out there. Does it have segment. active motor mounts? It does not have active motor <laughs> oh, mounts. Oh well, but yeah, it has, it too much it. For but it, it has the epic five cylinder turbo engine in it that oh. won the rally races of years past. It that's does. obviously been updated, and that's oh. what, what generates that kind of horsepower. Five like cylinder idiot, turbo. But I, I thought for sure it was just going to say it had a V6 in it. But no, no five cylinder, the yeah. old school five cylinder turbo. Wow, I love With it. Revamped. Yep. How many, what's the displacement on five cylinders? I don't know where it's to... a 2.5 liter engine that's putting out 360 horses. So the displacement per, or the horsepower for, for the uh, per liter is off the charts. Yeah. Versus yeah. competition or anything else in its segment. It's, it's just a yeah. very, very yeah. unique package. 2.5 and it's making 400. 360. 360. 360. Yeah, 360 for, for one. Yeah, so the well over 100. 20, 150 uh, yeah. per liter, it's insane. Exactly. So um, now uh, last but not least, then the uh, R8, which always screws me up, because now it should be an R10, <laughs> right? So we have an R8 GT, which is well, sort of the racier, lighter weight version, and we, then you cut the roof off. Of yeah, we named the R8 after the original race car that we, uh, that we raced and won Le Mans with from about seven, eight years ago before we shifted to TDI. But the R8 GT uh, is a V10 560 horsepower engine. In this case, the one that we're showing here today is the R8 GT Spider. Uh, 60 units destined for the United States, limited mm -hmm. build, 333 mm -hmm. units worldwide, uh -huh. just like what was built worldwide uh, for the coupe. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the uh, Spider, like I said, 60 units here in the US. So uh, the, the, the V10 yeah. is 520 horsepower, the GT is 560. Correct, 40, up, 40 horsepower increase and 120 pound uh, weight reduction. So the combination of that with the sportier suspension uh, will uh, make you make you just enjoy it. Just, just I'll say what I love in that car. I love the knurled shift knob and the gated 
yeah. stick shift, yeah. and I drove one, uh, the eight V8 variety, all around an Air Force base, and I think we were doing a pilot for Top Gear, the U.S. Top Gear, just drove the hell out of it, but all day and nothing, like just no overheating, no air conditioning yeah. going, a Yanni blaring through the speakers, <laughs> like, I, that's what I listen to, but it, it, just, it just works. Um, so the question, and we, we forgot to bring it up all all day, really, is uh, diesel, mm. because <laughs> that was an interesting sound. Because <laughs> at some point, yeah. somebody said, oh, "I think one of those things is going to get a V10 diesel," and then that kind of went away. Obviously, is where's Audi in diesels? Are any plans in the future? Yeah. So we there was actually going to be a V12 diesel in the R8 that we were looking at, but we chose not to bring it. I remember the um, uh, the concept for that. They yeah. were testing it. There was, there was some heating issues. I mean, <laughs> turbocharged 12 cylinder in a little tiny car. It was also a matter of, of how many units. It's a sort of a business yeah. decision mm -hmm. as well. But we have uh, diesel in the A3. We have diesel in the Q7. We currently uh, on the oh, A3. Oh, you do? Know, yeah, that's right. The Q7. We doubled right. our volume when we introduced the diesel. 100% additional incremental volume on the Q7. We sell 43% of our volume is on TDIs. We can't get enough of them. We, as soon as they I arrive, know. they're yeah. sold. I know. And, and you can't, uh, by the way, if you're looking for deals on those used, no. they're not so much out there. Yeah, no. Not the diesel, for sure. And just the resale is, I mean, who knew diesel? Because I'm sure back in the day when someone was buying a diesel Oldsmobile in 1981, someone was screaming at them, you know, no, you'll never yeah. be able to sell that thing. And now it's like, uh, it's hard to find I mean, it's hard to find a price, you know, a nice price on a used one because they're just in demand. Yeah, it's a it's a different world for diesel than what anyone may think of from years past. Uh, it's clean diesel, and it really lives up to its name. One, you don't have the no noise and the pinging and the sound. Yeah, Two, right. you don't have the black smoke, the soot, and three, you have incredibly high torque. Uh, for for diesel engines that make them really fun to drive, a V6 acts like a V8 in the yeah. in the Q7, and, and it really and for, moves you. And for towing. Too, which Absolutely. We're into. Absolutely. Uh, and the uh, the diesel. I mean, stop me if I'm wrong here, Mark. But a, a few less moving parts, and a, a, I, I don't know. Your average diesel engine lasts a little bit longer than the non-diesel variety. I think. I think the days of when the diesel engine was really just huge steps beyond the gas engine. Uh, those days are probably over. Gas engines have gotten yeah. much better from those days. But nonetheless, there are a little bit fewer moving parts, and it certainly it does help a little bit in terms of reliability. Is there is there any plan to do S versions of any of the SUVs? Uh, we are not going to be doing any S versions of the SUVs at this time. We, we have some things that we're looking at, but we don't have yeah. anything concrete. What we do have is we have, uh, we're expanding our diesel lineup to be included on the A8 on the A6, on the Q5. So that will then complement the the uh, uh, the uh, A3 and the Q7. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we are gonna be looking at the A4 in its next model iteration yeah. when the, when we have a new A4. But next year when I come back and I see a Q5S model, I mean, it's my idea. It will be your <laughs> idea, you're right. <laughs> you're right. You, you know, really I also, are. I like the A5 as well. Are you doing um, an RS version of the 5? Yeah, we have, uh, the TT is sort of the relaunch of the RS brand back to the United States after mm -hmm. a three year hiatus. Mm -hmm. And the RS5 we're gonna be bringing uh, next year as a thir thir 13 model year, excuse me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that'll be what horsepower do you know? Uh, 420 horsepower, I believe it is. I'd have, to, I'd have to check it. I love all the RS, and especially that crazy, weird blue. You guys <laughs> the, the, uh, I guess that was a, oh, that was RS6 back in the day, RS6 right? and, RS6 and the RS4 cool. yeah. as and the well. RS4, had had RS4, I see more of the blue in the RS4. Yeah, but, oh, the yeah. 6 meant you were a lunatic. Like, when you'd see that car, like, you just meant you were nuts. That was, and I, that I was heavy. That, car. that was a good color. Uh, Thanks, Mark. Nice, uh, nice work with the lineup, man. This Appreciate stuff is it. unbelievable. And uh, thanks for the uh, turbo and the TT. You bet. You bet. All five seconds of it. it. Sounded like gay slang, but you know what I mean. <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, there you go, taxpayers. Part two of the uh, LA Auto Show 2011, safely in the ground. That was a thrill, Matt. It was a fun show. A lot of great debuts, and like I said before, it's it's fun to see cars being debuted here in LA now, as opposed to just Frankfurt, Detroit. And yeah, we get some good cars now. Speaking of Frankfurt, had a nice Frankfurt over at the Porsche. The Porsche Center over there. Nice, nice to have a dog. Asada, all the things you saw over the two weeks we were here. <laughs> what do you think? Um, Favorite I, booth? I I don't know about the booth. I'm I. 
I'm a fan of the Audi TT RS. I, yeah. I like the idea of just a little car, only comes with a manual, 360 horsepower. Yeah. Turbo five cylinder. Yeah. I like that car. Yeah. All right. I uh, I think I think I think we'll agree to agree on that one. So and until next time, this is Adam Corolla for Matt DeAndrea saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel.